Okay, everything done. Okay, Rama, Tom, record Rama. Okay, cash the recording. All right, thank you. Hi, everyone. Nice to see you all. Um, being a part of the uh, Utah Cyber Open Day event, uh, we welcome you all to join this uh, webinar. Okay, first of all, this platform is a sharing session which is related to the topic of environmental, occupational, safety, and health program. Okay, for our friends who attend this uh, live webinar, this is definitely a great info for you before choosing or take up engineering program at Utah. So we will start shortly while waiting more friends to join in. And for information, uh, Utah having Cyber Open Day now and uh, from 20th March to 4 April 2021, 9 to 5 p.m. And uh, the features function that you can assess like live video chat and uh, we have webinars, definitely, and uh, career guidance, virtual campus tour, student project showcase. So uh, we welcome you to assess and uh, talk with our academician or our education advisor. Or you can assess uh, through our screen sharing here. You can scan and assess, scan the barcode here, okay? So our speaker is here and ready to meet up with all of you. We will introduce her to you shortly. Okay, for information, Utah do offer engineering and green technology program. This platform mainly aim and target on the school leavers or parents who would like to know more about engineering program. And yes, you may approach or reach us to know further. Okay. So um, the expectation that throughout this webinar, you may have an uh, idea about this program and make sure that you are ready or prepare yourself when you further study at Utah. Okay, you may contact our education advisor if you would like to know more info like program inquiry, scholarships, environment, club and society, student exchange program, study tour, and so on. Okay, so we are about to start. Hi everyone, nice to see you all to attend the uh, webinar. So let me introduce myself first. I'm Jeffrey, Education Advisor from Division Program Promotion, Utah. Okay, welcome and we are happy to invite and have our speaker here today, Dr. Lim Fang Li. She is an Assistant Professor from Department of Environmental Engineering, Faculty of Engineering and Green Technology, Utah. So the topic we would like to share and talk about in this webinar is what is environmental, occupational, safety, and health. So the webinar duration will take approximately one hour, include Q&A session. If you have questions, you may click the chat button and leave your question. And lastly, uh, we will introduce you Utah program and contact details of Utah. So now I will pass the floor to our speaker today, Dr. Lin. Thank you. Thanks for the kind introductions. Hi everyone, welcome to join this sharing session. So for this sharing sessions, I will share with you all what is environmental, occupational safety and health. Okay. Okay, so um, we will go through part by part. So for the first part, I will introduce what is environmental health. Health as defined by WHO, it is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not merely the absence of disease or infirmity. A person's health is basically determined by genetic and also the environment. The environment it is referred to the external factor of the individual human host. So an individual's the genetic material is one of the major factors that determine how he or she is affected by the environmental exposure. Environmental, it can be divided into the physical, chemical, biological, social, and also the psychosocial process in the environment. So environmental health, basically, we will link this factor 
for example, this physical, chemical, biological, social, and psychosocial factor, that this, this factor, they will affect the quality of life of human. Okay, so in environmental health, it will apply the theory and use the practice of assessing, correcting, controlling, and preventing these factors in the environments that will potentially affect our health, either in presence or affect our young generations. Okay, so you can see the figures on our right hand side. Oh, sorry, yeah, this figure it shows the environmental risk factor that will affect our health. For example, the air pollution, which including the indoor air pollution and also the outdoor air pollution. Okay, and then the next one is inadequate access to the clean water and also sanitization. The next one is chemicals and biological agents. Chemical refers to the chemical gases or the vapors that we expose to in the environment. While the biological agents are referring to the bacterial, viruses, fungus that are present in the environment. Then next, radiations. Yeah, radiations refer to the UV and also the ionizing that you are exposed to in the environment. Community noise. The example of community noise are such as the traffic noise. And then at the occupational risk, yeah, referring to the risk factor that presence in the working environment that have potentially harm our health. The agricultural practices, yeah, for example, the usage of pesticides or the wastewater generated by the agricultural practice, yeah, these are the contaminants that will affect our health. The built environment, for example, the housing environments, the roads, yeah, these are the examples of the facilities which will also affect our health. Lastly, climate change. The climate change will affect our health. For example, the extreme weather, yeah, it will affect our health and safety. For example, the occurrence of the flood, drought, thunderstorms, yeah, this will affect the health of community. Okay, next we proceed to the interaction between environment and human and also the people. So as human, we will have demand. Okay, so we will have demand on the products. So if there's demand in the market, so it will lead to the industrial activities. Industrial activities, it will release the pollutant into the environments and result in the pollution. Okay, so if the pollutants they are released into the environments, we are required to carry out the environmental monitoring to measure the level of pollutants released into the air, into the water, okay, so that we know the level of pollutants in the environment. Okay, so after that, these pollutants, uh, when they release into the environments, humans are exposed to these environmental pollutants. When we're exposed to these environmental pollutants, uh, we, we are not sure the adverse effect of um, the effect due to these due to this exposure. So we need to conduct the health monitoring. So health monitoring will assess the effect, the health effect due to this exposure, due to the environmental pollutant exposure. Okay, to measure the health, of health outcome. Okay, so the health outcome, including the sign and symptoms, the, me the medical sign and symptoms, and also sometimes the health outcome is not constrict to the medical sign and symptoms only. It might also uh, affect our psychological health. Okay, for example, stress or noise that produced from the industrial activities yeah, it will also indirectly affect our health. Okay, so this cycle it keep going on. Yeah, and this will, uh, this this figure it shows the interrelationship between the environment, people, and also our health. Okay, next one. Next, I will explain regarding the occupational health. 
Okay, basically, occupational health, it is a multidisciplinary field of healthcare. The main focus of occupational health is to promote the health and safety of the workers at workplace, to improve the working environment by preventing harm from the hazards in the workplace, and also develop the work organizations and culture that support health and safety at work. Okay, so occupational health, it involves the promoting and promoting the improvement of working conditions and also other aspects of environmental hygiene. Okay, in order to achieve these three goals, we can identify the determinants of the workers' health, including determine the risk for the disease and injuries in the occupational environment, social and individual factor, and also their access to the health care. Okay, you can see the figure on your left-hand side. Yeah, this figure it shows the work-related non-communicable disease and mental disorder. Non-communicable disease means disease that is not easily um, disease that they develop due to the individual risk factors or the environmental risk factors. Okay. From the data provided by WHO, 53.3% of this work-related non-communicable disease are due to the are, are linked to the occupational carcinogens that cause death from cancer. Okay, it means that 53.3% of the total death are due to the occupational cancer. And then the second cause of death that link with the work-related diseases are the respiratory diseases, which is due to the exposure of airborne gas particles and also allergens. Next one, 2.3% of the death are due to the mental disorders, such as the work-related stress, overwork, or harassment at work. And then last one, yeah, the 0.9% of the death are due to the musculoskeletal disorder. Okay, the example of the ergonomic problems uh, might be due to lifting of weight, awkward posture, and also repetitive movement. Okay, so this movement, for example, the lifting of weight, if we carry the we carry objects that are too heavy repeat, uh, frequently or if we are working in an awkward posture, and also uh, we keep repeat the same movement and um, same repetitive movement, yeah, all of this, it will cause injuries to our musculoskeletal system. Okay, why safety is important? Safety is important, yeah, first of all, it's to, it, to, it's to avoid accident. Accident, it is, it will result in injuries and also fatality. Okay, so safety is important to avoid these injuries and the fatality. Other than that, it's important to protect the comfort and health of the workers and also to protect the good image of the company. If we able to have good OSH culture in the organizations, we are able to reduce the medical cost due to the medical claim and also the uh, work-related diseases or injuries. Okay, next one. Uh, the most common term that we all we often seen in the EOSH field is yeah the hazards term and also risk this risk term. Yeah, these two terms are the two most common terms that we always seen in EOSH field. What are this? What are the difference between hazards and risk? Okay, hazard it is a factor or exposure that may adversely affect our health. Okay, hazard it is a source of danger. Okay, it can be explained like it is the potential of the environmental agents that can potentially harm our health. Okay, if it, if the exposure level is high enough. Okay, well, for risk, risk it is the probability of an event will occur, 
will, will occur after we expose to a specific amount of the hazard. Okay, the case it is referred to the probability of an event will occur. Okay, for example, you can see on the right hand side, yeah, risk it is equals to the hazard times with exposure. If we are exposed to the hazards, yeah, there's a probability we will get the, the negative outcome or positive outcome. Okay, so it depends on the exposure. If there is hazard presence, then the human must be exposed, must must expose to the hazard only will have the risk. For example, if we using umbrella to reduce the sunlight exposure, then the risk of the getting sunburn will be less compared to another two individuals who do not reduce their risk of exposure, then they are directly exposed to the hazards. Okay, next one, I will uh, proceed to the next section that I will explain the over the general types of hazards. Okay, generally there are six types of hazards, physical hazards, chemical hazards, biological, safety, psychosocial, and also ergonomic hazards. Physical hazards are the hazards that arise at work due to the influence of various forms of energy. For example, noise, the noise generated by the machines or noise generated from the working pro work process, temperature, maybe exposed to extreme, extreme cold environment or extreme hot working environment, lighting at the office, vibrations that generate from the power tools, radiations. Okay, so these are the example of the physical hazards. Well, for chemical hazards, they, they are referring to the hazards that may cause due to the chemical substance exposure. For example, the, the chemicals, they have, they have different properties. Some of the chemicals, they are having properties that will cause cancer. Yeah, this, type of, this type of chemicals are known as the carcinogens chemicals. Some of the chemicals will, will have uh, corrosive properties. Irritant, very acid, very, uh, having very high or very low pH chemicals um, and also some chemicals they able to penetrate our skin easily and absorb into our body. Okay, so these are the chemical hazards. Next one, the biological hazards are referring to hazards that may cause by the living organisms. The living organisms are here, for example, the virus, bacteria, or fungus. For example, the yeah, COVID-19, yeah, it is one of the examples of biohazards facing by our frontline medical, medical care staff. Okay, next one, yeah, is the fourth hazard is safety hazards. Okay, safety hazards are referring to hazards that create unsafe working conditions. For example, conditions that create sleep, trip, and fall. Working at height using ladder, scaffold, or any elevated area, or we when we exposed to unguarded or moving machinery parts, yeah, that's also considered as the safety hazards. Or when we are exposed to the electrical hazards, and when we working at confined space, yeah, this is these are also the example of safety hazards. The safety hazards are referring to the and safe working conditions. Okay, next one is the psychosocial hazards. Psychosocial hazards are the hazards due to the interrelationship between individuals' thought and behavior and also their social environment. The example of the psychosocial hazards are such as occupational stress, job intensity, sexual harassment at workplace, and also violence at work. Okay, next one, yeah, the last hazard is ergonomic hazards. Okay, so ergonomic hazards are the hazards that are caused by the physical factor within the environment that can harm the muscular skeletal system. 
Okay, so the example such as hmm, repetitive movement, manual handling, awkward posture, overhead work, or twisting, we're often twisting our body to carry heavy objects. Yeah, and these are the example that will cause injuries to our vascular skeletal system. Okay, next we proceed to the main, branch, main branches of study in EOSH. Okay, um, the main branch, yeah, we can, actually they are, we require all the disciplines of knowledge in order to apply EOSH. Okay, the main branch at here, I categorize them into the epidemiology, toxicology, safety part, and also the health risk assessment. Actually, EOSH, it is a very wide field. And then uh, this epidemiology, toxicology, and safety part, yeah, we can group them into this, this three, this three groups. And then after that, we apply this knowledge and skill in the health risk assessment. Okay, so first of all, what is epidemiology? Maybe some of you don't know what is epidemiology. Okay. Epidemiology, actually, it is the study of how often the disease occur in different group of people and why this disease or injuries occur. Okay, so epidemiology are these systematic studies of the illnesses and also the injuries that will relate to the uh, causes, risk factor of disease, injuries or event in the environment. Okay, so for epidemiology, we will study the possible risk factor of the disease or the injuries. Then next one is the toxicology. Toxicology involves the study of adverse effect of the chemical substance on living organisms that involve observing and reporting symptoms that are that due to the exposure of the toxic substance. Okay, and then uh, for toxicology, yeah, we will study the actions and also the reactions of the toxins on human body. Okay, after if we expose to the toxin, the toxins either will be inhaled by us, ingested by us, or through the skin absorptions or inject injections. Yeah, this toxin will will enter into our body through this pathway. Okay. After that, human body will metabolize, store, or eliminate this toxin. Okay, so the reactions or the movement of this toxin is known as the toxicokinetic of the toxin. While well, how our body reacts with these toxins are called as the toxicodynamic. Okay, so a balance between this toxicokinetic and toxicodynamic of the toxins and the body will determine the health effect. Okay, next one is the safety part. Okay, safety part, as I mentioned just now, they're referring to the uh, unsafe conditions that will result in the injuries or the mortality. Okay, so some examples of the industrial safety are such as the machinery safety, electrical safety, mechanical handling, welding, working at height, and also uh, working at confined space. Okay, so by applying this difference, uh, the knowledge in these different courses, and then we will conduct the health risk assessment. Okay, basically health risk assessment, it is a four step process in which we will identify the hazard first, after that, we will, we will measure the level of exposure. The third step is to determine the relationship between the dose and also the associated health effect. And then last step is to characterize the risk. Okay, so for this health risk assessment, first step, identify the risk, sorry, identify the hazards. The hazards we can identify from the feedback from the community or the workers, or we can identify this hazard from the site visit inspections or work through observation 
Okay, for example, um, we when we carry out the worksite inspections at the factory, we will identify the possible hazards in among the workers when they are working at the factory. Okay, and then other than that, we also can identify the hazard from the epidemiology, laboratory animal and tissue study, or from other type of documentation. After we have identified the, the possible hazards, then we will assess the exposure. Okay, so we will assess the exposure by measuring the level and the dose that we come into contact with the hazards or with the exposure. Okay, so uh, we will determine how much the pollutant we expose to in the environment and how this agent affect our health. Either they affect our health through inhalation, skin absorptions, ingestions or injections. Okay, so uh, we will determine the level of exposure by either collect the biological sample from the uh, people living in the community or we will collect the biological sample from the workers. So the biological sample that we collect are such as the uh, urine sample, blood sample, or exhale, exhale A, or the uh, or hair, hair sample. Yeah, these are some of the biological samples that we can use to determine the exposure level. Okay, other than collecting this biological sample, we also can refer to some scientific data, laboratory reports, or epidemiology study to determine the exposure. Okay, after that, we will proceed to the next step. The third step it is those response assessment. Okay. So um, those response assessment, uh, we will in we when we assume we assume if the dose of the exposure increases, so does the likelihood of the effect or the health effect will be increased. The health effect, the relationship between the dose and response, yeah, it can be either linear in linear graph or in non-linear graph. If linear graph, it is, yeah, this is the linear graph, okay? If non-linear graph, yeah, it can be in sigmoid curve. Sigmoid curve, sigmoid curve is like S shape, okay? X axis, it is the, um, X axis, yeah, normally this X axis, it, and why exist they are the dose and also the respond. Okay, those, this is those, and then this is the respond. Okay, so the relationship can be in direct or in uh sorry, in the linear curve or non-linear curve. Okay, and then next one, after we have assessed the dose and respond. Last step is to characterize the risk. The risk, it can be calculated by using formula or we can determine the risk by using risk rating table. So from the formula of from the risk rating table, we will determine whether the risk is either low, medium or high or whether the risk it is negligible, acceptable or not acceptable. Okay, so after we calculate the risk, then we will need to manage the risk. Okay, so for risk management in OSH view, we will manage the risk by using the uh, hierarchy of control. So hierarchy of control is a series of control measures that we try to reduce the risk to a minimum level. Well, for the EH part, for the environmental health part, yeah, we will apply, yeah, this is one of the example how we manage the risk by using the concept of this uh, framework. This framework, it is the DPSEEA framework. Okay, 
So this framework, yeah, if there is, yeah, this D is referring to the driving force, P referring to pressure, S stands for the state of change, while exposure, yeah, E stands for exposure and also effect. And then lastly will be the action plan. Okay, so for the driving force, yeah, the driving force it refers to the forces in the environment that has led to the emerge of the hazards. Okay, for example, we use technologies to de develop industrial, and the industrial activities lead to the production of waste, burning of fossil fuel, and generations of plastic waste. Yeah, this have changed the environment. These changes are referring as the driving force. And then this driving force that changed the environment will put pressure on the environment. Okay, for example, the rapid development of the industrial activities and can result in the increase of the greenhouse gases emissions. Then next one is the uh, change of state. The emissions of the pollutants and also the greenhouse gases, yeah, they will change the environment. Okay, and then yeah, these pollutants will create in the new exposure to human and increase the dose of exposure. Okay, once uh, this pollutant emit into the atmosphere, yeah, it will result in the effect which will affect our well-being and also increase the morbidity and mortality rate. Okay, lastly, after this um, D, P, S, E, E, they are determined, then we can plan action plan to mitigate this health effect. Okay, so this health, uh, this, um, sorry, these actions, they can be taken at multiple levels by starting changing in the driving force, okay, so that we can aim at reducing the fossil fuel productions, okay, or to develop the technologies that can be uh, mitigate the health effect. Or we can reduce the pressure on the environment. For example, we can using the carbon sink or plant more trees. Then, or we also can aim to reverse the state by developing develop the weather warning system and also moving people away from the coastal area. Or we can try to reduce the exposure. Yeah, we can reduce the exposure of human exposed to extreme heat by building better heat proof home. Or we can improve the effect by improve the adaptations and also the resilience. Okay, so basically, uh, these are the concept of EOSH. Okay, EOSH, um, yeah, the main, uh, main terms that we always see are the hazards and risks. And then these are the type of hazards. Yeah, after we have identified the hazards, then we will apply this knowledge. Other, yeah, actually, these are the a few very important subjects in EOSH. Okay, other than these courses, there are other courses that will support this course for us to apply the knowledge in this health risk assessment. Okay, so for health risk assessment, we will use this um, basic four step to determine the risk. And then after that, we'll manage the risk by applying the hierarchy of controls to manage the, to reduce the risk that among the workers. Okay. Yeah. Next, I will like to have a short briefing regarding the EOSH program in Utah. Okay, so EOSH program, uh, it is a four years bachelor program Okay, so throughout these four years, students will study 131 credit hours. Okay, so the EOSH program in Utah, it is MQA accredited. Okay, EOSH program, yeah, we, 
the EOS program in Yota, it is a double major program which integrate both the environmental health and also occupational safety and health discipline. Okay, so under EOS program, the students will study the environmental health related courses. Okay, for example, the toxic or waste, the water quality, the air quality, and also the healthy home and healthy communities yeah, subject related to the environmental health. Okay. Other than that, yeah, students will study the occupational epidemiology, emergency response and planning. Yeah, uh, what are the emergency response and planning in the industry? Fire, chemical and machinery safety. Yeah, and then hazardous substance, industrial safety, industrial hygiene, economic, law related to the environmental health and also occupational safety and health. Okay, in order to manage the workers in the future, you are required to know some psychological skill also. So you will need to study organization psychology. Okay, other than this uh, academic subject, uh, throughout these four years, students will also learn soft skill and also uh, soft skill through the curriculum and learn some language. Okay, so EOSH program is a is uh, EOSH program have a very comprehensive co-curriculum because we would like to enhance the students' soft skill and also their hard skill. Okay, according to a survey that conducted, it is found that the employer, most of the employer says that the soft skills are very important as the hard skill the student learn in the university. Thus, soft skill it is a essential skill that we aim to develop among the students. Okay, for example, the communication skill, leadership skills, yeah, time management skill. Yeah, these are the soft skills that you will develop further throughout these four years. Okay, so these are the examples of the, soft, the hard skill development. Okay, the students in this program, they um, having this hard skill development through the practical classes, the site visits, and also learning from the industry expert. Okay, so our students, they are, yeah, you can see we invite the expert from the industry to give um, knowledge sharing and also experience sharing to our students. Okay, these are the uh, examples of the practical class that we conducted yeah, in the subject of industrial hygiene. Other than that, we also bring students to site visits okay, to learn the to learn and also observe what are the um, working conditions and also the hazards in the real industrial workplace. Okay, other than that, yeah, for this program, we have extensive industrial training. Okay. So for this program, uh, it is a four years program, but the students, they will undergo three times of industrial training, which related with the industrial attachment at clinical setup, government agency, and also private sector. Okay, so these three times of industrial training means that the student, uh, they will have three trimester of industrial training. Okay, so uh, one trimester will be attached to the clinical setup. Another, another, set, another trimester will be having industrial attachment at the government agency. And then the third trimester will be attached to the private sector. Okay, we also have competent teaching staff. Okay, all of our academic staff have extensive industrial background and also networking. Okay, so these are some of the professional competency of our academic staff. Okay, and then uh, we also have external collaborations. Okay, we, uh, we are actively collaborate with the industrial, local authorities and also relevant societies to continuously enhance our program in order to suit with the market's needs. 
Okay, so these are the example of the participation particip participation certificates in the OSH society. We also have the industrial panel, industrial advisory panel. Okay, Puan uh, Hanisa and also Miss Tan, they are our industrial advisory panel. Okay, Puan Hanisa, she is the deputy director of DOSH. Okay, while Miss Tan, she is the the OSH office officer from the industrial. So both of them will give advice to us in in the academic program in order to improve our EOSH program. Okay, so yeah, this is the uh, sharing sessions shared by our industrial expert last, uh, yeah, this is to, yeah, this was during last year, the sharing sessions. Okay, so um, the student also can apply scholarship and financial aid, either the internal or external scholarships. Okay. Yeah, this is the one of our students who received the Utah China Ambas Ambassador's Scholarship last year. Yeah, lastly, uh, here I will present some of the frequently asked questions by the school leaver during open day. Yeah. School level of, will often will ask, can I get a job after graduate from this program? Okay, for this, you do not have to worry because environmental and OSH issues are everywhere. Okay, for example, the water pollution issue, okay, the river pollution issue, and also the, the incident that recently occurred at the Suki Highway that involved the collections of crane will result in three deaths and three injuries. Now, these are the examples of the environmental and OSH issues that will need the professional in the EOSH field to help in mitigate them. Okay, so EOSH, it is the one of the most in-demand job in this recent year. Okay, it's about 9,000 safety and health officers are needed in the country to cater the increase of workforce and new development, new development project nationwide. Okay, this statement, yeah, it is from the Tan Sri Li Lam Thai. Yeah, he is the NIOSH Institute of Occupational Safety and Health Chairman. Okay, NIOSH Institute of Occupational Safety and Health, uh, it is the institute that provides uh, NIOSH training process. And then, yeah, this, other than that, yeah, these are the um, list of competent persons that required under the law. Okay, so under the OSHA Act and also the Factory and Machinery Act, uh, it is required for the heavy industry and also the factory with, factory that employ a lot of workers to have safety officer. Okay. We also, uh, it is also required a uh, CHRA assessor. CHRA stands for the Chemical Health Risk Assessment. Uh, authorized gas tester, entry supervisor, yeah, hygiene tech one, hygiene tech two. Yeah, all of these competent persons, yeah, they are needed to perform the um, health risk assessment. Okay, so these different type of competent persons, they are very, very professional persons that are very skillful in conduct the health assessments. Okay, for example, the indoor air quality assessor, they are professional in, in assess the indoor air quality, and then they will assess the indoor air by measuring the contaminant level in the indoor environment. And after that, they will uh, do the walkthrough inspections. After walkthrough inspections and also do the measurements, then they will write reports and give suggestions what to improve regarding the indoor air problems. Okay, so this is one of the example. Okay, so uh, all of these are the list of 
competent persons that are required under the OSHA and also the FMA Act. Yeah, just now these are the competent persons under the occupational safety and health field. Yeah, and then, yeah, these are the competent persons that are required under the environmental part, which is under the Environmental Quality Act. Okay, so uh, no matter the employer one or not, they are they have to employ OSH officer or or the environmental officer and help them to tackle this and tackle this uh EOSH related problem. Okay. Another yeah, this one is the second most frequently asked questions by the school leaver is how much can I earn? Okay. Mm, if you type in into the you if you search at job street, the safety officer salary it can range from two thousand to uh, around twelve thousand with the average of six thousand okay so for osh officer safety and health officer if for fresh graduates the Beginning salary is about two thousand three hundred. Then after that, yeah, the salary will be slowly increased. Okay, juniors, executive, uh, the executive, for example, fresh grades, or after uh, maybe workers who have one to two years or one to three years exp working experience. After that, as you have more working experience, then uh, your salary will be slowly increased. Okay, for those who work, for those who have working experience more than five years, yeah, basically their salary is about minimum. They will have minimum salary of five thousand, with average six thousand three hundred. Okay, because uh, EOSH officers, it is an occupations that required experience okay well for the environmental officer yeah the junior executive earn a range three thousands while for the senior executive it will earn about four thousands per month okay this is the yeah just now the one is the search result from the job street while this is from the pay skill okay so if you search in pay scale, environmental health and safety officers, uh, the median salary per annum is for 46,000 plus. Okay, well, for the safety officer salary, it will be higher, slightly higher, which is near to 50, 50K per year. Okay, is this program suitable for girls? Yeah, because um, some might think that these occupations might be very hard for girls to uh, to do it. Okay, this actually this course is suitable for girls also. Okay, there are many. Um, actually, I have quite a lot of friends who are females that are working in the OSH field. Okay, because um, there are some works that maybe female can perform better. Okay. Yeah, there are a lot of, uh, for example, the OSH officer, the OSH coordinator, CHI assessors, hygiene technicians, IAQ assessor, noise risk assessor, yeah, site safety supervisor, yeah, all of these. Uh, you also can see female who are performing this EOSH professional work. Okay, so you can you can have a look at the DOSH and also the department. DOE is stand for Department of Environment website. Yeah, for the list of certified OSH and also the environmental professional professionals. Okay. Uh, they are mixture of male and also female. Okay, so here I reach the end of my slide. Okay, thank you. Is there any questions from the floor?
So um, due to the limited time, I think uh, actually uh, we thank you to our speakers. Okay, sorry. Okay, we thank to our uh, speaker today, Dr. Lim, who shared this uh, valuable info with us. So due to the limited time, within a duration, all the, uh, I think all the frequent ask questions during the open day, and uh, uh, even this uh, cyber open day have been compiled and answered by uh, our speaker today, Dr. Lim. So uh, actually we hope all this uh, information could help you. So um, we are about to end the uh, webinar session, as we uh, mentioned earlier. Okay, Utah do offer engineering and green technology program. And I will give you all a quick look with uh, some of our Utah info here. Okay. So uh, we have uh, some information to share with our audience. Okay, as you can see, uh, our Utah campus, okay, our main campus is actually located in uh, Kampa Perak, and then it's actually award-winning uh, campus. And uh, this is a distance uh, 170 km from KL City. And we have a branch, okay, Sungai Long campus in Kajang, Selangor, okay, which is uh, 24 uh, km from KL City. Okay. So uh, I will share this uh, area view to our audience, okay, to have a look. Okay, so this is a uh, Utah Kampa campus, our main campus, actually built on uh, 1,300 acre pieces of land. As you can see, this is a beautiful campus. Okay, you can see uh, green uh, scenery everywhere, and definitely you will enjoy this uh, exciting uh, study and journey okay, at our campus here. So another landmark that uh, I will introduce to you is Tun Dr. Ling Leong Sek Ho. Okay, so as you can see, this is a beautiful uh, grand hall. And uh, for information, we have uh, about two batch of uh, student graduate from this hall every, uh, every year. So uh, which is uh, in March and uh, August. So um, after students complete their study, okay, undergraduate program at Utah, definitely they can um, finish their uh, study journey uh, at this uh, beautiful and uh, attend this uh, a great ceremony, graduation ceremony uh, at this uh, grand hall. So another uh, landmark to introduce you. Okay. So this is sculptures of uh, Confucius and Einstein. Okay, it's uh, actually located uh, at the open space in front of the Heritage Hall building in Utah Kampa campus. Okay, the sculptures actually symbolize uh, the university of learning and thinking with the convergence of wisdoms from both uh, the East and the West. Okay, and let's move on. Okay, as you can see, uh, we mentioned earlier, Okay, Utah have a great scene everywhere, as you can see at the uh, Utah Kampa campus. Okay, and this is a uh, Utah Sungai Long campus. Okay, okay, this is our branch, and uh, we are going to share you our facilities here. As you can see, we have a lecture hall, gym room, multi-purpose hall, uh, library, science and engineering lab studio for mass communication students, okay, lab of uh, traditional Chinese medicine, okay, nursing lab and uh, so on. Okay. So another information to share with our friends um, about our rankings and awards. Okay. Actually Utah have these awards about uh, 501 to 600 for this uh, times higher education, especially entitled for this uh, World University Ranking, okay, in 2021. For Asia University Rankings uh, for last year, 2020, we have this uh, award position, 190, 19, okay. For QS World University Ranking, okay, for um, 
Okay, we take a look with this Asia University ranking. So this is an improvement. Okay, since last year, so we have the position uh, 157. And last but not least, about our QS graduate employability rankings in 2020 is about 251 to 300. And then uh, it's uh, in the sense that our student uh, can get a good job, okay, even can they can uh, uh, get employed after they graduate, okay, within uh, half years, it's about 95 to 90. 7% that they can get a job. And another award which we would like to share with you, okay, we, Utah actually ranked second in Times Higher Education, okay, THE in Malaysia, World University Ranking 2021. Okay, and I have some information to share with you. I just have a quick look. We have 121 academic programs at the moment. And then we have consists of uh, four foundation programs, 74 bachelor's program, okay, 31 master's program, and 12 PhD program. Okay. For applicants who do not fulfill Utah English language requirement, okay, uh, you or she need to attend the English enhancement program for one month. For example, if a student proceeds to foundation. For a student uh, who did not um, fulfill the English language requirement, requirement before they proceed to undergraduate program, then they will need to attend two months of these uh, EEP programs. Okay. So the areas of studies, uh, we can take a look. We have accounting, business and economics program. Okay, actual science, mathematics, and process management, agriculture and food science program, art and social sciences and education, Chinese studies, creative industry and design, okay, engineering program, IT program, okay, life and uh, physical sciences program, and medicine, medicine and health sciences program. Okay, for uh, your information, uh, our foundation programs consist of arts and science. So the duration of study is one year. And uh, this is optional for students to choose whether study at Kampa or Sungai Long. Except for a uh, student, they, uh, they are actually from foundation leading to architecture, Chinese medicine program, MBBS, digital therapy, nursing, digital animation, game design, game development. Definitely they have to attend their foundation uh, classes at Sungai Long campus. And uh, for a student, they are program leading to um, Chinese study. They have to study foundation at Kampa campus. And I will give you all a quick look about this, our FGD program, engineering technology and built environment. Of course, our OSH program, okay, EOSH, environmental occupational safety and health program we offer at Kampa campus. And uh, besides uh, OSH program, we have construction management, electronic system, industrial management, environmental occupational safety and health, uh, and electronic engineering, environment engineering, industrial engineering, petrochemical engineering program. Okay, these are all over at Kampa campus. So uh, for our engineering program, okay, these are the uh, information regarding the professional recognition uh, that okay especially for this uh, Malaysia is a sanctuary of the Washington Accord so um, meaning to say that of a student okay uh, Utah student graduate from engineering program definitely they can uh, appreciate and recognize uh, by uh, most of the country for example we have uh, includes Australia Canada China Chinese Taipei Okay, Hong Kong, China, India, Ireland, Japan, Korea, New Zealand, Russia, Singapore, okay, UK, US, and so on. Okay. Let's move on. And our international partnership, actually, we are up to 290 uh, local and overseas university and uh, 190 local and overseas industry in 30 economies uh, region. Okay, as of uh, 31st of January 2021, uh, have a collaboration with Utah. So students actually, they can uh, learn beyond the class. So besides uh, join our student exchange program, they can also uh, have a chance to do their uh, internship 
okay, with our partnership uh, university or overseas universities, okay. And uh, if you would like to uh, reach us to check more about our Utah programs or scholarship and so on, actually you can log on to our Utah website www.utah.edu.my or study.utah.edu.my or slash cm okay, for Chinese version. Okay? You can log on to check out our information here. Or even you can reach us at uh, Facebook. Okay? You just type Utah for you, okay, Utah Net. Or you can talk to us at uh, WeChat account, UtahNet. Okay. Or you feel free, you can call us at uh, 0162233557 or 0116243355. This uh, online number is mainly for uh, our friends or students they are interested in our uh, engineering program. Uh, and then uh, actually you can email us if you feel comfortable. And then you just uh, email to inquiry at utah.edu.my or uh, if you are an international student, you can email to international at utah.edu.my. Our education uh, advisor from Division of Program Promotion uh, will answer your question. So uh, thanks again, okay, uh, Dr. Lim, who shared the valuable info with us. And definitely, uh, we hope to see you again. Okay, thanks and bye. Thank you.